perfect attrix to the little Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my August wrap up part 2 two out of three I read a total of 15 books this month so these are the next five that I read so without further ado let us get started the first book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Perfectly Parveen. This is by Olivia Abte, and I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows 14-year-old Parveen Mohammadi, and she is half Iranian and American, and she is just beginning high school. She was just dumped by her first boyfriend, and she decides that she is going to hatch a plan to make the sophomore, Matty, fall for her and ask her to homecoming. She decides that she is going to be like the demure, perfect actresses that she watches in her favorite rom-coms. The only place she feels that she can still be herself is a Farsi school where she meets a boy who starts to like her for who she truly is, and it's like the story of that. This was a cute story for what it was, but the main character, Parveen, really bothered me for the majority of the book. She really got on my nerves because she didn't listen to literally anybody who told her that her plan was silly and she should just be herself, which I get it, she's 14, she's gonna make dumb decisions, but literally everybody in her life told her that it was a stupid plan. I did really like Parveen's two best friends, Fabian and Ruth. They were both very sweet and very good friends to her, especially when she was being pretty shitty towards them. I also really did enjoy the underlying message of self-acceptance and just being who you are, and I think that a lot of younger audiences should read this book for that message, but yeah, I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars mostly because I couldn't stand the main character, so... Next up is The Dazzling Heights by Catherine McGee. This is the second book in the Thousandth Floor series, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This begins pretty much right where The Thousandth Floor leaves us, and I just think that this <laughs> series is just so trashy, but it's so much fun to read. It's like one of those train wrecks that is just giant and you know you should look away but you can't look away and you just need to keep looking at it to see what the heck is going to happen next. That is this book series. I still really liked the multiple point of views in this. We also get a new edition of Colopio Brown which I really liked her character. I found her very intriguing and interesting. Still not exactly a fan of the incest plotline. I wish that it just wasn't included but we're on the incest journey now, so I guess we're just gonna keep on traveling down that path, but I'm hoping that it'll eventually just be like nixed from the storyline, but we're still waiting for that. The drama is absolutely wonderful though, and although these books aren't good per se, they are so addictive, so four out of five stars. Next up, I have A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. When Ironborn Fae in Toronto begin to be murdered and the eight courts do not interfere, four queer teens make an alliance in order to discover the secrets behind these murders and who is responsible for them in order to save both the mortal and immortal realms. The concept of this book is really fascinating. The whole idea that the Fae are living among humans without their identities being known was just very intriguing to me. The plot did become a bit confusing at times and I was a bit lost during some of this, but I really did enjoy the alternating point of views. I do think that Nasica Arlo, Vaughn, and Aurelian were all very unique and interesting in their own way. Nausicaa was definitely my favorite out of the four. I think that her backstory was definitely the most interesting and had me wanting to know the most about her. She was just so witty and sarcastic and just so much fun to read about and I really enjoyed watching her relationship with Arlo grow as the story progressed. I actually lived in Toronto for five years so I thought it was really cool to be able to picture the streets so vividly like it was giving street names that I've walked down before so it was just really cool to experience a book in a setting that I actually recognize because a lot of books are written in the states and I haven't been to a lot of states so it was really cool to be able to like really understand where these characters were. I also really liked how there was a mystery 
aspect to this story. I do think that it dragged a little bit. The book is 499 pages and I definitely think that it didn't have to be 499 pages. But overall, I do think that it was a lot of fun and definitely a really great setup for the next in the series, which I cannot wait for. So, four out of five stars. Next up is Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. I give this a 4.5 out of five stars. So, this follows the Bone Criers, who are a group of women who use the power of the moon as well as the animal bones that they wear to ferry the dead into the afterlife. In order to gain their full power, they need to perform a sacrificial ritual of their one true love. Elise has prepared for her ritual since birth, which will make her the matriarch of the Bone Criers. After witnessing the death of his father at the hands of a Bone Criers, Bastion has been seeking revenge ever since. So when their lives become intertwined in both life and death, Sabine, Elise's best friend, will stop at nothing in order to protect Elise, and it's like the story of that. I liked this a lot more than I thought I was going to. Right from the very beginning, I was hooked on these characters and this story. I was so intrigued by the bone criers and their powers. I thought that the concept of the animal bones that they wore around their neck to give them special powers depending on what the animal was, was really cool and I just wanted to know what each animal would give to the bone crier, which we only got a couple, but I wish there was like a list in the back of like literally every animal in the entire world and what their ability would be because I just thought it was so cool. I really liked how each bone crier had the opportunity to choose which three animals they would kill and sacrifice in order to gain their powers so it made each one unique in their own way rather than everybody must kill this kind of animal and you get that power. It was like they could decide what they wanted to be strong at. I also really liked Bastion and Elise's relationship and how they really did go from enemies to lovers and I really liked the uh, banter that they had between one another. It's definitely a slow transition from the hate enemies to lovers but I was here for it the entire way. Also big fan of Elise's and her mother's very complicated relationship. She just wanted to be good enough in her mom's eyes and it was like heartbreak that she wouldn't be no matter what she did. I was also a really big fan of Sabine. I loved watching her grow more into herself as the story progressed. I think that the biggest complaint I have for the book is probably Jules and the hatred that she had towards Elise. Although it is understandable, she took it a little bit too far a couple times and I was just not a fan. I am very excited to pick up the sequel to this book. Hopefully I can find a copy very soon because I really loved this and I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. The final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap up is Goodbye From Nowhere by Sarah Czar. I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. I was not the biggest fan. It follows Kyle Baker who discovers that his mother is having an affair and he also finds out that his father knows about the affair and they have asked him to keep it hidden from his girlfriend and the rest of the family because they are going to be attending their reunion very shortly. And they don't want anybody to know. So this kind of turns Kyle's life upside down and he starts to isolate himself from his girlfriend and his friends and the baseball team that he was doing very well in. And the only person he really feels that he can talk to about this is his cousin Emily. And it's basically just the story of Kyle's entire life falling apart because he found out that his mom is having an affair. So... I just wasn't a fan. Although nothing ever happened per se, uh, Kyle was really creepy towards his cousin Emily. Like, it was just giving me total incest vibes and I was like 100% certain that at some point they were going to like the hookup and it just, the vibe was off. I just wasn't here for it. The reason I gave it two out of five stars is because I do think that the other family dynamics were very interesting and I did enjoy reading about those. I just didn't really like Kyle as a character. He just really pissed me off and I wish that he communicated with Nadia, his girlfriend, and his baseball coach instead of completely shutting down. Like, it didn't have to be 
as big of a deal as he made it out to be. I understand that finding out that your mom is having an affair is probably traumatic, but also like maybe talk to people about it. And I get that your mom told you not to talk to anybody and your dad told you not to tell anybody, but like you told Emily your cousin, so what's the difference from telling your girlfriend and your baseball coach? I'm just saying, I just, I, I don't understand. Like I understand his feelings, but just watching him destroy his life because of what his parents did just really... I couldn't vibe with it, so yeah. This book just wasn't for me. Maybe it'll be for you, but not for me, so I gave it two out of five stars. Alright everybody, so that was my part two wrap-up for August 2021. I'll leave part one and three down below if you want to check out the other ten books that I read this month, and let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>